derivative in shape of graphs. One thing we know already, and I'm going to just write it in a formal way, that um, if, the, if the derivative is positive on a certain interval, then the function is increasing. Right? And, and if the derivative is negative, then the slope is negative, the function is decreasing. This leads to something we call the increasing-decreasing test, or the ID test. And basically, it says the following, that <clears throat> if f prime of x is positive on a certain interval i, then f of x is increasing on the same interval. And likewise, if f prime of x is negative on an interval, then f of x is decreasing. And finally, we have an, the remaining possibility f of x is zero on an interval. In this case, we're going to say that f of x is constant or horizontal. So basically, we have uh, an interval over which the function is a horizontal segment, line segment. So I'll move to an example. Let's see how we use this example in identifying the intervals over which the function is either increasing or decreasing. So let's look at the following uh, function, f of x equals negative x to the fifth power plus 5 halves x to the fourth plus 40 over 3 x cubed plus 5. Okay, what we need to do, we need to find intervals on which f of x is increasing or decreasing. So this is like a short hand uh, notation. Instead of spelling it out, I put it just a uh, I slash D. So, how I'll approach this, any suggestion? What would be the first thing to do here? I'm sorry? Find, find F prime of X, and, and the purpose of it is so. What in particular are we looking when we look at the derivative? Uh, yeah, but before that, I need to define intervals. So how will I determine those intervals? Well, if a function changing from positive to negative or negative to positive, it has to go through a zero, right? I'm sorry. Uh, I'll take it back. If a function is changing from if the derivative is changing from positive to negative or negative to positive, it has to go through zero. So really the first thing to do is find the critical points, right? And the critical points will tell us what are the intervals. Now the critical point may be, may or may not be relative extremum, relative max or mean. Remember, it's not guaranteed that if you have, if you find a critical point, then that will be a place where the function changed from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. Recall uh, x cubed, the derivative of x cubed equals zero at x equals zero, but the function is continuously increasing. Right? There is no uh, relative uh, extrema, extremum over there. But nevertheless, the first thing to do uh, is to find the, the, uh, the critical point. So first, find critical numbers. 
of f of x. So we'll take the derivative. And the critical number, since this is a polynomial, uh, the derivative uh, exists. The function is differentiable all the way through. And um, all we have to worry about the uh, setting the derivative to equal zero because we, the derivative will exist all the time. So we don't have a case where the derivative does not exist. So let's see. Let's uh, take the derivative, negative 5x to the fourth, and then plus, um, what do we have before? Uh, so we'll have 10x cubed, and then 40x squared. So <clears throat> this is it. We want to set it to equal 0. And therefore, let's factor. We'll see the common factor will be uh, negative 5x squared. So we have x squared minus 2x and minus 8. So f prime of x equals negative 5x squared. And then we factor this trinomial, and you can see that it's x minus uh, 4 times x plus 2. So the critical numbers are x equals, and let's go from left to right. The smallest number will be negative 2, and then we have 0, and then we have positive 4. So, since those are the critical numbers, it's quite possible that uh, those will be a point where that separate the function or uh, an interval over which the function is increasing from another interval over which the function is decreasing, possibly. So, essentially, we are looking at four intervals. So, divide the domain of, of f of x into uh, intervals into the following intervals. So we look at, okay, left of uh, negative 2, we'll, have, we'll go negative infinity to negative 2. And then we'll go from negative 2 to 0. We'll go from 0 to 4. And finally, we'll go from 4 to infinity. So we have four intervals, like so. And now we need to test We need to perform ID test for each interval. So how will you perform ID test? I'm going to pick up a value on negative infinity to negative 2. So I'll pick up x equals negative 3, and I'm going to check what happened to the derivative if x equals negative 3. I don't care about the value. I care about whether f prime of negative 3 is either positive or negative. Okay, we know it cannot be equal to 0 because we know that f prime will be equal to 0 at negative 2, 0, and 4. So I'm looking at uh, this uh, <clears throat> factored form of f prime, negative 3. So the first factor will be negative as x as negative 3 squared is positive. Uh, so we have negative we have negative and we have negative. So uh, f prime will be negative. So in this interval, f prime of x will be negative, and therefore f of x is decreasing. So I write equal d just to show that it's decreasing. Okay. Now I'll pick up a test point on the interval negative 2 to 0, and a convenient number will be negative 1, right? So I'll pick up negative 1 and see negative, negative, and positive. So negative times negative times positive to give me positive. So f prime is positive uh, on this interval. 
and as such, by the test, f of x is increasing, right? Now, you think that the next interval, you see, we transition from decreasing to increasing. So, if the next interval, if zero is a, a local extremum, then the function will go from increasing to decreasing, right? So the next interval will have a decreasing function. But we need to test it. So I'll pick up a test point between 0 and 4. Conveniently, I'll pick up f prime of 1. Plug 1 in the factor form of f prime. We have negative and negative and positive. So we have negative times negative times positive. Guys, it's still positive. So f prime of x on this interval is positive. And turn out that f of x continued to increase. What does it tell you about x equals 0, the critical number x equals 0? Is this a local extremum? No, because the function is increasing through x equals 0. Hence, that you need to be careful. Not every critical point or, or not every critical number will lead you to a local max or a local mean. So the next or the last one to check is on the interval 4 to infinity. I'll pick up 5 and see what happened to f prime of 5. Negative, positive, positive. So it's negative. The product is negative. Okay. So on this interval, f prime of x is negative and the function is decreasing. So, if I want to put it together, I'm going to say that the function is increasing, f of x, this is like a summary, f of x is increasing on the interval uh, negative 2 to 4. And f of x is decreasing on negative infinity and uh, negative 2 union. And the book, I mean, the web is I think you'll have uh, the word n. Um, I don't think they use the union, but I, I like to use the union as it's more compact way to show that we have two intervals over which the function is decreasing. And of course, ultimately, what you can do to, uh, to verify it is graph this polynomial in either a standard form or the factor form and see how the function behaves graphically. But this is one technique that allows you to determine whether, when the function, uh, on what interval the function is increasing and on what interval the function is decreasing.